Today is Earth Day, a moment to take stock of the health of our planet and for communities to come together and take action. Joining us now is Dr. Radley Horton, Lamont Research Professor and Climate Scientist at Columbia University. Good morning, Doctor. Thanks so much for being with us. So earlier this month, the UN released its latest climate study, which laid out the path people need to take to avoid the worst consequences of climate change. So on this Earth Day, I'm just wondering first, what did you take away from that and sort of where we're at? Well, the urgency is clearer than ever, right? We've now had more than one degree Celsius of global warming. It doesn't sound like much, but we see already so many more frequent coastal flooding events, combinations of heat and humidity that people literally can't survive through, fires, droughts. Mm -hmm. So we really are approaching that point where if we don't dramatically reduce our emissions and adapt, protecting the most vulnerable, um, we may get into a situation where the consequences are happening too fast for us to keep up with, especially for the world's most vulnerable. Yes. Yeah, so, I mean, right there on our screen right now, you can see the lower third says now mm -hmm. or never. There's also this term tipping point that comes up a lot, all sort of the same thing. It's kind of like we're we're at it now, but it's hard to wrap our heads around what that really means. What does it mean to you and how close are we to that point? Yeah, so tipping points are a really important concept. It's basically this notion that for a while, we're in the driver's seat. The amount of greenhouse gases we emit is directly related to how much warming we get, how much agriculture is affected. But with a tipping point, the notion is that somewhere along that line, as we're turning up greenhouse gases, we can lose control of the narrative because new processes can emerge that change the fundamentals. So that suddenly we get to a point where a little bit of warming actually changes the climate system. For example, by melting that Arctic sea ice that's so good at reflecting sunlight as a white surface, a little warming, if it melts enough of that sea ice, exposing the dark ocean underneath, now sunlight comes in, warms that ocean more in a potential runaway effect, or at least an effect where now a little bit of emissions cause more harm mm. than they did in the past. That's just on the climate side. When we look at people, food systems, vulnerable people trying to pay their taxes, there too, we worry about these tipping points. At some point, the more we increase greenhouse gases, the bigger the risk that we start to see hard to predict mm. changes in our social systems and vulnerability in ways where we could run the risk of not being able to keep up and protect our people. And quickly, before we let you go, let's end on something positive. What can we do to be combating this just everyday people in their everyday lives? What sticks out to you as something that's promising? Tipping points can be positive too. When we see the price of renewables coming down so fast, batteries becoming cheaper, mm. there are real steps people can take now to reduce their emissions switch to renewables, um, also using a little less, making sure you don't have as much food waste, potentially flying a little bit less. And when we look at young people and investor groups, they're coming together demanding that companies reduce their emissions, prepare for these climate threats. So that's a tipping point that's starting to really work in our favor. Dr. Radley Horton, we appreciate your time so much. Thank you and happy Earth Day. Same to you. Thank you. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.